What's Happening Delco? I'm Rich Shane and welcome to the What's Happening Delco podcast. Today I'm joined by Nicole Snyder and Sarah Gibbons of Family Support Line. Ladies, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much. You are very welcome. So talk about what is Family Support Line. So Family Support Line is a nonprofit organization that's been in Delco for almost 35 years, but most people haven't heard of it, we're finding. So we're really glad that you invited us to be guests on your show. Family Support Line's mission is to advocate um, for children that have been affected by child sexual abuse. So the real goal is to advance the prevention and treatment of child sexual abuse. So we do a number of different things. It's a very holistic approach. We provide prevention education in the community to both adults and children. We also provide advocacy services for children where there's an allegation of child sexual abuse. So they actually come into our office and are interviewed by our specialized staff. Those interviews result in um, potential evidence for cases that are taken to court. So we work with law enforcement, child new services, and then also the DA's office on those. And then we also provide um, advocacy services to the families, court accompaniment, all those different kinds of things that are associated with the case. And then the last thing we do, which is very important, is provide treatment um, to kids that have been affected by this um, with mental health services, support groups, and the like. How did Family Support Line, how did all this get started? Sure. So there was a father, um, a Delaware County father, whose uh, daughter was sexually molested by her stepdad. And this happened in the 80s. um, And he was getting really frustrated because none of the systems were working together. They weren't talking to each other. And his daughter had to keep telling the story over and over again. Um, So he was getting really frustrated. And he met with all of them, all the different partners at the at the courthouse, which is now Spazio's on State Street, and pounded his fist on the table and said, my daughter will not testify until you all start working together. And that was the start of Family Support Line. There was a group of social workers that pro bono just provided support to families and church basements. That was in 1984. And then we became incorporated in 1988. So that's how we started. And coincidentally, Um, In the 80s was when this kind of movement was happening across the country where people were realizing that children were being traumatized by having to tell the story over and over and over again. And that was the inception of the Child Advocacy Centers, which are evidence based. Um, They their whole goal is that that child will only need to tell the story one time where everybody, all the different partners hear the story at the same time. And I'll just add that that is a a video recorded um, interview during that process. So um, the child and our forensic interviewer are in one room and all of those other partners are watching that um, that interview happen in a separate room through a live stream video session. So um, so it's really a one on one session, but everybody gets to hear it uh, take place. We talked in the beginning and you mentioned Delco. Is this the family support line only limited to Delco or do you serve the surrounding counties as well? Only Delco, Mm -hmm. um, which makes it really unique and really special. That's why we want people in Delco to know about it. Um, We have sister agencies in other counties in the region. There's 40 child advocacy centers across the state. Um, But this one is a special one in Delco that we're very proud of. Now, you mentioned it's something that a lot of people haven't heard of you or may not be aware. And obviously, hopefully no one, you know, the services are there and it's so valuable. Hopefully people don't need to know. But if they do, how do people contact? How do people connect with you? That's a great question. And that's actually why people haven't heard of us. So um, everything we do is is pretty much referral based, except for our prevention education, which we go out into the community and work with um, partners on. If a child, um, if there's a suspected incident of child sexual abuse, anybody, um, whether it's your neighbor, um, a co-parent, a teacher can call the statewide hotline, which is Childline, um, and they can put a report in. Childline is responsible at the state level to review that case and determine whether or not it's a 
um, whether the allegations are valid and should be verified and investigated further. Those referrals come to law enforcement. There's 47 jurisdictions in the county of Delaware, a lot of different law enforcement officials, um, and they're also sent to children and youth services. So those two groups um, do further investigations to determine whether those allegations are ones that should move forward. And then they're referred to us. So because in the past, traditionally, everything has come through referrals, there hasn't really been this need to talk about what we do. Child sexual abuse is a very taboo subject. A lot of people don't want to talk about it because 85% of offenders are close to the family. So they're either family members or they're very close friends. Um, so people don't really talk about what it's like to be a victim or survivor of child sexual abuse because it has such a uh, quote unquote stain on the family name. Um, and so we, we really want to change that. We want to encourage people to speak um, about things because we know that the earlier they disclose it, the faster they can get help um, and the shorter the impact um, that it will have long term on the family. You spoke to the education part, what you do in the community. Can you elaborate a little bit more on the education and what service that provides? Sure. Nicole, do you want to take this one? Yeah. Um, so our prevention program um, within the community, we are focused on um, going into schools and helping students at the, the child level. Um, that can be, you know, classroom by classroom based. It could be um, working with a sports team or a, a sports organization, let's say a soccer association and, and working to help them understand body safety. Um, sometimes we're talking about internet safety. It's a huge topic, social media and, um, and the, the online predators that are out there. So helping kids understand warning signs, um, knowing what's, what's appropriate and what's not and what's safe and what's not, who to connect with. Um, because as Sarah mentioned, 85% of the time, it's somebody that the child knows. I mean, that could be someone within the household could also be a coach. It could be a teacher. So it's somebody that that child feels safe with to, you know, they, they should feel safe with. Um, so if something happens, they need to know who they can go to or, you know, who's a safe person and things like that. Um, we also want to make sure that we're getting out there and we are educating um, the parent community so that they are aware of warning signs to look for. Um, one thing Sarah hadn't mentioned yet is we do we do work with a lot of human trafficking victims in Delaware County. Um, There's a rising number of cases that we're seeing. Oftentimes, um, traditional trafficking, you, you might remember like the Liam Neeson movies, um, you know, Taken, where the van comes and hijacks the girls away and they're sort of drugged and whatnot. But it's very different in modern times. Um, this can be happening right under the family's noses. Sometimes these children are coming home and sleeping at night. Um, they are they are sometimes um, being referred to as what is called, known as boyfriended. Um, so the person that they think is a significant other is actually trafficking them out um, and, and they're, provide, they're trading services for an item. It could be cigarettes or vaping tools or um, technology like cell phones and things like that. So getting out in the community and educating the adults out there on what to look for can help identify um, in, in juveniles who are being trafficked because um, it's very tricky in the trafficking world. They are, they're being manipulated by the person who is um, the offender and they they trust that person. They don't see themselves as a victim. So if you were to approach them, you know, they'll tell you everything is fine. You know, there's nothing going on here. Um, so we we tell parents and we tell community members, you know, does this child come in with brand new clothing where you're looking and you're like, huh, where's that fancy outfit coming from? Or where's this new iPad or cell phone coming from? I didn't purchase it for them. Where did they get it? Um, so giving them tools so that they can be better informed and, and um, in that regard. We also sort of along the same lines with our prevention and education, we get out there and we educate our community partners. So our law enforcement, our child and youth service partners, um, the district attorney's office, we have a child abuse um, 
an exploitation task force. So it's really important for us to get in front of those individuals as well and talk about what's going on in the county with the cases that we're seeing and also um, help to train them so that when they go out to investigate these cases before they're referred to us, they're doing what we call minimal fact training. So they're asking essentially, you know, the who, the what, the where, the when and the how did it happen? We're, we, we say like, don't ask them any more questions. We do not want to increase the trauma that that child has experienced. Um, so we can keep those questions minimal. So when they come to us for that forensic interview, our trained uh, professionals are able to dive in deeper and have that child feel comfortable to share the additional details. You Nicole? mentioned some things to look for or look, you know, look to, and I think you shared at least one of them. Are there other things that people should be looking for or signs that people could be more aware of? Yeah. So, I mean, I think the most important part that people need to understand is if a child is under the age of 18 and they are having sex and getting something for that sex, it is considered victimization and a crime. Um, A lot of people don't realize that. They don't realize if they say, you know, to a minor, I'll give you cigarettes if you have sex with me, or I'll give you alcohol if you have sex with me. They don't realize that that's trafficking. Um, There is no such thing as a child prostitute. Any child that is under the age of 18, where there is some kind of exchange or transaction of goods, is considered a crime. Um, And a lot of people don't realize that. And our kids don't realize that. They don't realize that they're victims. Um, And so there is a lot of education that needs to go into that. Um, It's helpful for parents to even know that because sometimes they don't think that they can do anything about that older boyfriend. Um, You know, I think the other piece of this, too, as far as identification is what Nicole said. There are at any given time 500,000 predators online looking for children. They're looking for victims. Um, So it's really important to talk to your children about not talking to strangers. Um, They're very good at at playing off that they're children. Um, And so it's important to monitor what your kids are doing. One of the things that I always try to recommend is an app called Bark, um, B-A-R-K. It is an app that will flag things um, that your child may be doing with their cell phones or their tablets um, that are things that the parent needs to know about. So they flag those and they let the parents know. It's a small monthly charge, but it's totally worth it um, because, you know, this day and age, it's really hard as, you know, working parents and busy to really make sure that you're monitoring your kids. Um, and this is kind of a way to, to feel safer about what your kids are doing online. Thank you for all the efforts and all the hard work you're doing. I know day to day, some of these things that you find and discover and are brought to your attention are probably very unsettling, horrific. And uh, that's something that, uh, you know, what you can impact to provide this to become eliminated, if ever possible, uh, would be very beneficial to our society. If, is there a website people can go to to reach out as well, find uh, resources, information? Absolutely. So um, probably our most up-to-date information is on social media. So we're on Instagram, um, Facebook, and LinkedIn, Family Support Line of Delaware County. Um, We do have a website as well, familysupportline.org. And um, another thing that I should mention too is we will come to any group that's willing to listen to us. All of our services in Delaware County are free. So everything from mental health to coming in for advocacy to prevention work, everything is free. Um, So I think that's important to remember. um, Just if people are looking for resources, we're happy to come and talk to anybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go and well, we're happy to come and speak at a congregation and, you know, educate people in different community settings, not just that school environment. So I think that's important to know. Mm -hmm. Now, you also have a large event coming up that you're working on. Talk about that event a little bit. Yes. So this is our annual fundraising event. It's the um, largest fundraising effort that we do during the year. Um, It is happening this Friday, coming Friday, um, April 28th at uh, 6.30 p.m. at Lanark Country Club in Habertown. It is a it's a fun event for Delcoians, I'll say. They, you know, they love a party and we deliver on that. Um, so while we've been sitting here talking about some really heavy content, 
Um, it, we are celebrating the work that is happening at Family Support Line. So we're not going to be hearing tons of speeches um, about the day-to-day -day hard, traumatic things that we see on a daily basis. We're really celebrating being able to help these um, these youth and juveniles heal and overcome the trauma that they have um, that they've witnessed. Um, so it's it's a really exciting time to to get out there. If you are able to join us, um, you could purchase a ticket online. Um, it's uh, bids number four kids twenty three dot givesmart dot com, um, and we're happy to accept a guest the day of um, at that venue. Um, we've got a live auction, a silent auction, traditional raffle tickets in a bucket type of a thing. Um, we have a giant wheelbarrow full of liquor and wine. So you can get some raffle tickets to hopefully win a wheelbarrow of... Um, of the well, Nicole, of how giant are we talking in terms of size? Are we talking about, you know... 40 bottles in there, 20 bottles. Is it a dump between truck? Between 20 and 30 other? bottles. Between 20 and 30 bottles. It's a traditional it's a party wheel on bottle. wheels. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. You guys are. Hey, look, you're right. You, you deal with very heavy, very deep, you know, day to day stuff. This is a way to, as you said, the volunteers, people like you making this effort to, to really, um, you know, just kind of raise the money, help, help yeah. what you're doing. Right. That's what it's all about. Exactly. So, and we've, we've got a wonderful group of attendees that come out year to year, but we, it's, it's fun to see new people come out as well. And um, pretty much, I would say majority of the crowd is there. Everybody's from Delco. So, you know, it's a very Delco vibe and, um, and we love it. All right. Well, you said Delco. So mm -hmm. we're going to ask you some Delco questions. Okay. Sure. All right, you're out and about and you're planning for the party and you have a cheesesteak craving. Where are you going? Ooh. I like Delco steaks personally. Delco steaks is good. <laughs> um, oh gosh. I'm trying to think of another one besides Delco steaks, Nicole. Well, I live in Ridley. Um, so there's a lot of good places in Ridley. Um, I would say Rocco's in Woodland has a good cheesesteak. Um, I even go down to the Stargate Diner. They have a good cheese steak, good cheese steak. Um, but you know, um, there's so many, there's so many, which. All right. Well, you did the cheese steak. Next day you have a pizza craving. How about pizza? Yeah. Where are you going for pizza? Oh gosh. I like Johnny's in Prospect Park. Um, but again, that's hard. That's hard. Yeah. I don't want to call anybody out. You know, I mean, it kind of depends on the pizza. You know, double decker is good for, you know, thick crust. And um, Coco's has a good pizza. Mm -hmm. Rocco's has a good pizza. I'm going to shout out all of my Ridley. My Ridley uh, <laughs> Everybody's members. rushing to Ridley. I live now. in Ridley. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and we're in Havertown. So I think really like location too for us, like Sam's is where our family likes to go to. Um, Lovecchio's, so... Those are on our on our top of our list. Thunderbird oh. has a great pizza in Springfield. Oh, that is a great Shout one out too. to that. Yep. <laughs> See, this is fun because once you get rolling, you start going, oh yeah, that one, that one, that one. I'm I know. Gonna make it easy for you on this one. It's a multiple choice question. Are you ready? Yep. Wawa or Royal Farms for your convenience store option? Oh my gosh, that's easy. What, what Wawa, hands yeah, down. Wawa, yep, Wawa. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah, the way you answered and the facial expression you made, I'm like, all right, I, I, I was so, I was so riveted as to your answer. That was great. Yeah. You're from Delco. We talked about being fellow Delconians. How do you describe Delco to people that may not be from here? <laughs> you know what? That's that's actually a question that we talk about all the time, Rich. Um, we are really proud that that the vast majority of our um, staff live in Delco and how important that is to really understand the um, all the different politics and the things that go into Delco. We have 47 police jurisdictions in this county. A lot of different police jurisdictions, a lot of politics, a lot of, you know, like behind the scenes kind of transactions and, and personalities. Personality. I think one of the things about Delco that I've appreciated is the fact that everybody knows everybody else. Um, people come from big families. Um, it's, it's, you know, it really matters where you're from 
and how long you've been in Delco. Um, you know, those are usually questions people ask me, like, how long have you been in Delco? Where do you live? What parish are you part of? Um, so, and, and again, it comes down to the food too. The food is always important. Um, I know Relish just opened. I'll give a shout out for them too. Relish just opened in Ridley and um, it's getting rave reviews. So, you know, I think that, I think it really comes down to family. Delco is very family oriented. We're very proud of who we are. Um, and we try to reflect that within our own organization with employing um, staff that are from Delco um, and different parts of Delco. Our board is from Delco just so that we really understand um, and can help our clients with the challenges that they're dealing with. Yeah. And I'll add to, you know, um, Sarah and I are often out in the community at networking events and other um, other organizations events and the Delco Chamber events. And what I love about the Chamber is it is such a family vibe. You know, you can go to other chambers and other counties and it's very stiff when you come to the Delco chamber. You know, everybody knows everybody. Everybody's willing to like lend a hand, offer a referral. You know, they just want to see everybody succeed. Um, you know, you, you go a few times and you start seeing a friendly face and then they'll introduce you to somebody else. And the next thing you know, you've got like this really great network of people. Mm -hmm. um, Rich, I mean, you're you're great with doing, you know, connecting people in that way. Well, thank you. We met at Delco Meets for Business. That's yeah. our meetup, Delco Meets for Business. And uh, we collaborated with the Chamber. So thank you very much for yeah. that uh, shout out on that. For, for both of you, what gets you out of bed every day? What motivates you? You want to start, Nicole? Or are you still thinking? No, yeah. I mean, for me, um, it's my family. I, we have a big family. We have four kids. Um, they're 10, six, 10, 8, 6, and 4. Um, you know, it's, it's getting out there. It's getting to do this work. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm in the development field, so I'm fundraising. I'm not on the front lines of our, um, like that our staff are seeing these, this traumatic work every day. Um, but I know that what I do every day is impacting the, the lives of kids in Delco. And when I come home and I look at my kids in the eyes, you know, I want to know that what I've done that day is, is helping to, make a difference for our kids in Delco. So, I mean, really that's what gets me up out of bed every day and, and making sure that, um, that their future is bright. Yeah, I would agree with that. I have three kids, um, six, eight, and 11. Um, they go to Ridley or Ridley school district. And, um, you know, I really, my goal is to make this world a better place, um, you know, to help them with being, um, good, kind, um, loving individuals when they grow up to be adults, that they're productive, um, but also that they value um, just the ideals of what we're looking for um, in, a, in a good community, a safe community. Um, and I also would say, you know, that, that really what keeps me motivated of doing this job is the fact that um, only 38% of kids disclose their abuse. It's a small number. Um, so the kids that actually come in, even though their stories are hard to hear and it's not a happy place coming to our center, unfortunately, they made it and they disclosed. And the important part is, is that they disclosed and we want to praise the fact that they felt comfortable doing that and that they did that because now they're on the road of healing. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm always grateful for that because I know that those kids will hopefully not have um, some of the issues that other people face that do not disclose. So I would actually encourage that by just saying that today, that it's really important to disclose. Um, just saying it takes so much burden off of people. Um, a lot of our kids say that, you know, they come in and at the very end, they say, I feel so much better now that that's off me. Um, and so, you know, that that's really important. And that's just the first step in that healing process too. So, you know, they're, they are going to be much better off as they continue their healing journey and into adulthood that they hopefully won't face those, the long-term effects. Thank you so much, Nicole and Sarah. Thanks for the work that you do, the changes in Delco, in the lives of the people in Delco, the things that you're doing that make a difference. Uh, thanks for being a friend of What's Happening Delco. That event is Friday the 28th at the Lanark Country Club. 
And uh, there are still tickets available. And if I haven't bid on the wheelbarrow, maybe you have a shot to do it too, okay? <laughs> yeah, and even if you're not able to go, you can still bid for um, for items online and participate in things like our 50-50 and our wheelbarrow. Um, so feel free to check that out as well. Yeah. Thank you so much today. Thanks again for being on the podcast and uh, you know the impact that you're making in the community. Thank you so much for having us.